though I saw this video doing for rounds. It's by uh, a YouTuber called Jukia and the video is actually really good. I will leave a link in the description. Today we're going to be looking at the science behind nostalgia in autistic individuals and the comparison between neurotypical people and neurodiverse people. I'm going to use those terms for the purposes of this video. For neurotypical individuals, there's process. When the child starts to grow up, there's a process called synaptic pruning a lot of the uh, synapses, so the sort of wiring of the brain, are kind of deleted or they're cleared up or they're kind of removed over time. And typically half of all the synapses are removed in like neurotypical people. The advantages here is that the pruning process kind of streamlines and focuses on relevant and up-to-date information and getting rid of a lot of the other stuff which may not be so relevant anymore. However, with autistic individuals, they might actually experience significantly less synaptic pruning, retaining significantly more synapses, around 20% less pruning than neurotypical individuals who would get roughly about 50% of their synapses pruned. So this would mean that autistic individuals may retain more of the connections and potentially have more detailed memories from when they were younger. And I also think this is probably partly why a lot of people like stuff that they liked as a child more when they're an adult and they may actually experience more nostalgia and they might have more fond memories like literally more fond memories of say sonic the hedgehog from when they were a child this um highlighted connectivity might contribute to a narrow focus on a few areas allowing for deep detailed knowledge. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but with some autistic individuals, and obviously every single individual is different, there's a lot of focus on, you know, particular areas, you know, they might become experts in a particular area. This can have massive advantages. These areas can be incredibly diverse. Sometimes these areas of speciality might lend themselves to a career, for example. So they might become uh, effectively professors in a particular area with expert knowledge in that area. This can be a huge advantage, but it is a bit of a disadvantage because they might have less of a general interest overall in other things. The memories don't necessarily become deleted and they're not sort of gotten rid of, but they become a lot less accessible. So it's kind of like the brain is archiving a lot of the older information. So you don't necessarily forget the old stuff. You just don't think about it as often, if that makes sense. However, when you retain synapses more, you get a sort of more extensive library of detailed memories and sensory data to draw on. So this again can be a huge advantage and it can contribute to heightened nostalgia, which again relates very, very nicely into things like Sonic the Hedgehog because a lot of people when they were kids have really fond memories of Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, for me, the first game I really ever played or one of the first two games was Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Autistic individuals often experience heightened sensory perception, so they might experience something more strongly, they might hear sounds more, they may get overwhelmed more quickly because they are experiencing much more of the world and there is a lot less filtering going on. So basically people who are so are on the autistic spectrum might actually feel everything. Whereas for most people, there's a lot of stuff that's ignored, for example. So similar to playing a game with the graphics and sound setting turned to max. If you imagine turning the contrast up on the screen, everything might look a bit more vivid. Uh, sound, light and textures can be more intense for people who might be on the autistic spectrum. And this can lead to uh, sensory overload. One of the big advantages is you notice a lot more stuff going on. Uh, you may have a more detailed perception of the world, but the disadvantage is you may have less of an ability to focus on a particular thing. For communication and social interactions, autistic people might have a different social cues or way of expressing themselves. So if they're in a noisy party or something, they might find out a bit of a stressful environment. 
then this can make interactions more challenging, but also uniquely interesting. Another interesting thing I think about the Sonic the Hedgehog series is the routine and the predictability. So at the start of every level, for example, the music's going to be the same. You know, the um, layout of the level doesn't really change. And this can kind of create a really comforting feeling, knowing what the music's going to be, knowing the order of, you know, what's going to happen next. And I think even like using a controller in a game is a kind of a predictable outcome. You know, you know, if you press A, for example, you're going to jump. So in conclusion, I think we've highlighted you know the unique way that some autistic people might kind of view the world a lot of the sonic the hedgehog series have you know bright vivid colors there's not a lot of um background junk you know you can really kind of focus on the game if you think about the characters for example it's noted in the videos that they are strong primary colors i actually really think that um the relationship between sonic and tails as well as a lot of the other characters are also kind of simple but sonic kind of acts as a big brother to tails and I mean, certainly when I was growing up, I kind of found that relationship to be really comforting, you know, kind of like best friends almost. But uh, I never had a big brother or anything like that. So it was just kind of nice to, you know, kind of have that relationship that I could kind of draw from. You know what I mean? Anyway, guys, I think I've gone on long enough with this, but let me know what you think. Do you think this uh, is a good explanation? Or, yeah, let me know what your feedback is. And again, like I say, check out these two YouTubers. Certainly, if you have an interest in them, go and subscribe. And yeah, have a wonderful day, guys.